It is day 12 of our crossing from Bermuda to the Azores, and five days after our Iridium Go died on us, leaving us in the middle of the ocean without any updated weather forecast, our shore support Willem comes through for us and our backup satellite tracker finally gets activated. <laughs> Willem came through for us! Woo! Willem! Woo! Within an hour, we manage to get in touch with our weather router Charlie, who sends us the coordinates to a waypoint for us to follow. And as a bonus surprise, on the morning of the next day, we get reunited with our body boat Zanzibar, a thousand nautical miles offshore. Where have you been? Zanzibar! With emotions on board rolling as fast as the gnarly Gulf Stream sea state that we are experiencing in the Northern Atlantic, we are starting to face some of the mental challenges of an ocean passage, and the atmosphere on board is a little quiet. Welcome on board Polar Seal. It is day 12 of our Atlantic crossing. Here is the thing. If crossing an ocean was easy, a lot more people would do it. Uh, and I think that we could talk a lot about what is hard about crossing an ocean, but one aspect is definitely that once past halfway, it gets mentally really difficult to keep yourself in a place where you're positive, happy, and excited to be there. Usually in the first half of the crossing you have explored all of the aspects of the crossing from the watches to cooking food to all types of entertainment you can have on board and so typically in the last week of the crossing things can get a little rougher on the morale on board especially if uh, like it is our case you can probably hear it around me the sea state is a little bit crazy for the last three days we have been jibing like nuts soaps and jibing on board policy as you've probably figured by now is quite a complicated operation it takes us half an hour and it is something that we have to do at least three times a day and sometimes at night not to mention reefing that's all part of sailing but it, it takes a lot of energy i guess that what i'm trying to say is that today when i get out of bed i realize that the crew is a lot more tired and mentally fatigued than i probably realized so this afternoon in an effort to cheer everybody i am going to make a cake that I know everybody enjoys and uh, I'm gonna make a tiramisu. Also, as mentioned, the sea state is a little bit crazy, so this should be a little sporty. I think I'm gonna shake this reef out. Go right ahead. Huh? Go ahead. Just wanna do a five and a half. Yeah, that's the reef. Okay, so when I make tiramisu, I make it a sailor's tiramisu, and that means that instead of adding amaretto, or a, some type of an almond liquor to the coffee before dipping the finger biscuits, I, um, I add rum. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's when the spirits on board need to be lifted. Okay, let's lift some spirits. turning into a bit of a, a bit of a disaster. We're uplifting. Now I get to clean the mess. And if you're asking yourself, well, Sophie, aren't you just trying to sneak in as much booze as possible in the food uh, to lift spirit? Well, yeah, um, that's what I'm doing. But I, I agree with Zanzibar. If this speed gets too low, we're going to need to motor sail. Because yeah. otherwise it defeats the whole purpose of what we're doing. We have five knots of apparent wind behind us. 
and we're doing 3.9 knots. It's not good. All right, you want to start the engine? I think in a little bit, yeah. Let's just get, we look at our wind angle too. We're going almost due east again. Oh yeah, those winds have shifted. I think that the clouds with the... The rain, I don't know. So in the spirit of day 12, and also a little bit out of shame because it's now been 12 days that we have been sailing without giving in to our favorite activity on board when we're crossing an ocean, which is Ryan. Hello. Which is me what? It's fishing. Okay. Uh, the last time this box was open, was in 2019. So, we have our snubber. What color are we gonna do today, Ryan? Uh, the pink. The pink, I think that's an excellent choice. Big thought for uh, Jules, who uh, bought this amazing uh, lure kit for us. Oh man, Ryan, aren't you excited? Yeah. All right, fishy, fishy. Et voilà. And now we're gonna catch big tuna. I step on. down here. No. Okay. That is because the oven is on. Okay. Do you know what's in the oven? No. Do I need to open it? Yeah, you should open it. Is this bacon bread? Yes. Oh. Today, right, is the return of the bacon <laughs> bread. I love the bacon bread. Oh, that looks awesome. The bacon Yay, bread. the bacon bread. Oh, what happened here? Whoa. Do we have a fish? No. <laughs> Oh no, where is my fish? I put so much effort into this fishing today. You know, uh, choosing the lure and everything. Are you excited about bacon bread, Ryan? Does that make your day a little bit better? Um, it's a little better, I've had a, not a nice day. I've just been stressed, like, on the boat sometimes, with the moving and the noises, if it's, like, sometimes it can be too much. And if you, like, feel like you're losing control, it's like I get super stressed and today I just felt like... But Ryan, what were you losing control over? No, that's the thing, there's nothing. But, you know, you're downstairs, the engine's running, the water maker's on, the sail's like clogging like hell, the boat's moving everywhere. It's, it's just a lot, you know, it's like a lot of sensory things going on. Mm. Well, you made it through another day. Good job. And now you've earned yourself. You were supposed to finish my sentence here. A bacon bread bagel. Alright guys, shall we uh, break bread? Oh, Alright. Oh wow. It's hot. It's hot. How is this, Annette? Delicious. Heartwarming. Literally. <laughs> I also heard we are at 40 north now, so that's also heartwarming. Alright, let's go uh, lift some spirits. Okay guys, you ready for the real surprise? Yes! Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, Yay. heaven. That's great, honey. That looks amazing. What a nutritious dinner we just had. Oh yeah. And test this thermostat. Oh, it's so nice. Mm. So good. Thank does you for this, making this. Does this, this lift your uh, spirit in it? Absolutely, it's been lifted as high as it goes right now. Seriously. 
good morning. It is 4 a.m. and it's time to go on watch. But first coffee. Alright team, it is 6 a.m. The wind's picked up again, thanks God! Now it's time to sail. So I tried letting the main sheet out and nothing happened. That's when I realized that, or realized, that's when I remembered that we had dropped the main sail. So gotta go wake up Ryan <laughs> and uh, put the sails back up. Woo! I'll get in the wind, and I think that we should keep at least one reef out. Yeah, we're gonna take a reef. We'll have the reef out, yeah. Alright. One reef Better, isn't it? All right, not getting a lot of sleep this morning. We get a chime. And my angle to the wind right now is 130. We're like so deep. We are going way too north. All right, I'll, I'll take the head sailing. This is gonna be another half an hour operation. So making landfall in the Azores can be a little bit complicated because of the Azores high, um, which can be placed a little bit differently and it can create some fluky winds, some headwinds and now and then some perfect conditions. Um, we do not have that. Now our landfall in the Azores is made more complicated by the fact that we do not have direct access to weather forecasts. We are relying on uh, our weather router Charlie or our buddy boat Zanzibar. So yesterday we were navigating through a zone of low winds slash no wind. Today the wind is a little bit higher, at least we can sail. Um, but what is frustrating is that we do not have the wind that we would need to sail straight east towards the Azores. Because like right now the Azores are literally right in front of us. So what we need to do is to take an angle to the wind go uh, farther north before turning south and get to Rota. Uh, it is frustrating because when you look at a map it looks like we're sailing further away from the Azores when in reality what we're doing is go as fast as possible with the conditions that we have and you know, mentally when you have been at sea for almost two weeks and you're tired, you've sailed through rough conditions or you're a little bit sleep deprived it can be a little hard to look at the map and be like, F we're going farther. And to be very honest, it is even more difficult when the weather looks like this.
better make some more bacon bread. So until this point of the passage, we were staying pretty far south. We were actually planning on going uh, way, way north in the beginning, but the weather just didn't give us that. And uh, we stayed around 37 degrees of latitude. And the consequence of that is that the passage was fairly warm, a lot warmer than we thought it would be. And today, uh, just about an hour ago, we reached 41 degrees north. And I was wondering when the fall is would come out, well, they just had. We're also averaging seven knots, so a pretty fast day. Good times. We haven't seen that type before. I mean, since this day, I guess. Yay! I haven't left the companion way. What? I haven't left the companion way. What are you doing, Ryan? Just reading this. And in other exciting news, the wind is finally starting to turn north, meaning that uh, our climb northwards can stop. We can finally start turning towards the Azores and we can see Zanzibar on the horizon. What are you most excited to do when we go to shore? I am so excited to get drunk. Awesome!